about all of our history through storytelling. When we started to write it, evidence of skulls of humans show that the area of the brain that controls memory shrunk because I had it all written down. I don't have to memorize anything anymore. Major change. Fast forward to right now. We will look back at 2000. 1991 to 2012 and the next years has a major shift in the physiological makeup of the brain regions. No question. This is worrisome. Finally, changes in society. We talked about the dependence. We talked about that everyone's holding it. Even if you go to a wedding, you can't sit in a wedding anymore with people not using their phones. I'm on a joyous occasion. This is the moment that these two have been waiting for. Oh, I'm sorry, I have to answer my text message. <laughs> or this one. Everyone up like this. And I'm guilty. I was at a dear friend's wedding and I was, I couldn't help it. I, I don't want to miss the moment. What do you mean you don't want to miss the moment? In my mind, I thought, I have to capture the moment, I don't want to miss it. But you're missing it. <laughs> but I'll look at it later. No, you won't. Let's be honest. How many pictures that you take do you really look at? <laughs> How many do you print out? <laughs> How many videos that you take do you look at? You don't. We don't look at them. We're fooling ourselves. And we convince ourselves, I can't miss that, I can't miss it. Ch -ch 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 -ch. You're missing the moment. And the other major shift that's happening in society is that we are developing new disorders. We all have heard about ADD or ADHD. We certainly know that technology has led to an increase in diagnosable ADHD. But as a specialist in ADD, I can tell you, I'm seeing what's, what I'm now calling pseudo-ADD. ADD that pops up in adulthood. To be formally diagnosed with ADD, it has to have been there since childhood. It's a developmental disorder. It's a learning disability that you have like dyslexia. You're born with it. Pseudo-ADD, people come into my office and they've developed it once they started getting enmeshed with technology. Attention span goes down. Multitasking becomes difficult. Disorganization occurs. They can't focus on conversations. And the list goes on and on and on. Pseudo-ADD is skyrocketing. And the second condition that is evolving is what I call tech-induced stress syndrome. Tech-induced stress syndrome. People are getting more anxious. They don't know how to relate to the technology, how to balance it, how to let go of it, how to go to sleep without having to check it. One thing I, le I learned in doing the research for this lecture was that when you look at your phone, or your laptop, or your iPads, the light that emits from the phone is on a similar wavelength to sunlight. When sunlight hits the eye, it develops melatonin. Melatonin, or rather it suppresses, excuse me, melatonin. Melatonin is what lets us go to sleep. When the sun goes down, we don't get sunlight, melatonin stops uh, being repressed and it starts pumping through our brain and that's what gets us sleepy. When you're looking at your phones, you're shutting off the melatonin system in your brain. So you're going to be more alert, more awake, less likely to go to sleep. So those of you who struggle with insomnia, stop using your phones, laptops, and, and, and iPads at least a half hour before bed, at least. Very important. So, I've laid out the good, the bad, and the ugly. But I don't want anyone to leave here thinking that we don't have something we can do about it. The community, the scientific community, is calling upon scientists to come up with approaches to deal with this. So I have a few approaches that I want to share with you today. And with these approaches, we'll, we'll end the, the lecture. To help me with this, I'd like to actually turn to you first and ask you to utilize your smart pad again and perhaps even 
work on this with someone sitting next to you. And please list what are the things that you have done in the past, or currently are in the past, to help manage the balance with technology in your life. What are some techniques that you have come up with to create balance and manage technology safely? Please work on that. Take a minute. You got the question? What have you done to help manage technology? And if you have someone next to you and you want to talk about it, come up with some ideas. All right? It's good to share with each other. Right? I'd encourage you to talk it out with people. All right. Okay. So, anyone have any good ideas? Monique. Okay, you haven't located the, the no phone zone. Right. Yeah. Okay. But airplanes. <laughs> All right, so we'll talk about that. So you said um, finding a way to um, kind of reconnect with my roots of reading and connect with books, spending time with kids where I'm not really on the phone but I'm focusing my attention on them. You talked about uh, utilizing the Sabbath, and we'll talk about that in a moment um, as a way to create some space. All right. Uh, one other, anyone else? One other person have some ideas? Jamie. Just put your phone on silent mode. Put your phone on silent mode, so how does that help you? It's always on silent mode, so if it beeps or rings, I never really hear it. If I, I want to go check it, I have to intentionally go and check it out. Uh -huh. It's not going to intrude on a conversation or this lecture or anything like that. So you create a boundary. Yes. So the phone has its boundary. It cannot reach out and grab you and pull your attention away. Right. You decide when you're going to access it for your needs. It's still a challenge, but that uh, helps. Okay. So that's an, I think that's an excellent uh, tool to create the concept of creating a boundary and not easy for many of us. Right? How are we doing so far, by the way? Everyone okay? Love you. Doing all right? Yeah, I love you. All right? Okay. Love you. We'll do one more reading uh, right before we close out. Yeah, Simon. How about really understanding the quality of your time? Like, how are you going to spend, employ your attention to what? Because maybe you can turn your phones off and have a dinner with your family, but maybe there's nothing to talk about. Mm -hmm. maybe, it's more interesting to, maybe it's more interesting to look at your Facebook wall and see what your friends in the other side of the world are doing that is changing the world for the better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So why you have to learn how to stimulate the same, the same sensors with positive information that is going to take the, the, the attention away from the phone or whatever you're doing because I consider myself a person that really, really lives in the moment and to me, for me to be employing my time somewhere else, it means that that time is more quality than me. So you develop what I would call a mindful approach to your time and to technology. So these are, you know, among what everyone said, are excellent ideas, and I want to reinforce some of them uh, as part of my uh, some advice that I'd like to share with you. And I'd like to share those uh, who, who got us started on this uh, part of the discussion. Firstly, to understand technology and 
how to deal with it, it's helpful to understand this in the form of a relationship. So when I asked you the question, I was very purposeful when I said, how to develop a better relationship with your phone. The first question I asked you at the start of the lecture was, what is your relationship like with your phone? I'm using this language very purposefully because we are talking about relating to something outside of myself. When you think about this in terms of a relationship, that can give you perspective of how to interact. It's not just this thing. I'm relating to it, and it affects me as well. Now, on that note, one thing that can be very helpful for us to do in terms, you know, Jamie referenced creating boundaries. And Monique referenced the idea of taking a break from it. So I like to promote this idea of celibacy. Cell, as if cell phone, <laughs> celibacy. Moments without your cell phone. There's a very famous uh, quote by Henry David Thoreau that says, the soul grows through subtraction, not addition. Again, the soul grows through subtraction, not addition. Meaning, we really evolve and develop when we remove things from our life, whether it be things we are uh, addicted to, dependent on, by removing it, we actually grow. That's a lot of the concepts behind a lot of the precepts in many religions. Judaism has this all over the place. Remove yourself from eating for a day. Right? The Muslim religion practices this regularly. Remove yourself from something. It'll bring insight. The Sabbath is an amazing example of this concept. In Judaism, we have a built-in celibacy period from technology. For those who want to sign up for it, you can get the benefit of unplugging completely from technology from sundown